Welcome to the Wild Serengeti. First, let's set up the game. There are two sides to the map. Select a side and place the map alongside the action board. Place all your animals in their corresponding discovery areas. Cover the extra action spaces using the lock tokens according to the number of players. Shuffle the scene cards and place the deck face down. Then deal six cards face up from the deck to make a scene card pool. Make sure to leave room for the discard pile. Place the Rock of Ages on one side of the table and set the round tracker on the first round space. Shuffle your award tiles thoroughly and draw two to place face up in their designated areas. Set aside the remaining award tiles as the two drawn is all you will need. Now shuffle the Great Migration cards and place the deck face down near the Rock of Ages. Place coins, food tokens, the FX tokens, and score tokens on the table. Each player will need to choose a color and take the two corresponding player markers and one video gallery. Everyone will then need to place one of their two player markers on zero of the documentary score tracker. Everyone will draw eight scene cards from the scene deck, choose four to keep, and discard the rest. To play with the advanced rules, choose a specialist card at this stage, but if this is your first time, it's best to not apply these rules for now. Each player receives six coins as a starting resource for round one. The player who most recently watched a wildlife documentary becomes the first player. The first player takes the first player marker and places it in front of them. Now, we're ready to begin. Round. The goal of Wild Serengeti is to be the player with the highest documentary score, also represented as a star. There are a total of six rounds in Wild Serengeti. During each round, you perform one basic action in turns. Turns continue clockwise until all players have passed. The round ends when all players have passed their turn. When a round is completed, a round preparation is required before the next round can commence. Once you've finished round six, the game is over and the player with the highest documentary score wins. How do you obtain documentary points, you ask? Each scene card will have its own distinctive animal placement pattern. To obtain a documentary score, you must complete the scene cards by placing the animals on the map in the same pattern as shown in the cards. To achieve these patterns, players take turns performing a basic action. During your turn, you can perform one basic action. To perform a basic action, you must place a player marker on the action space on the action board and pay the directed amount stated on that action space. There are eight different types of basic actions. The first being discovering a carnivorous predator. When you move your player marker to the Discover Carnivorous Predator action space and pay the directed amount of coins, you can choose an animal residing in that section and place it on a free space on the map. The same rules apply when playing the Discover Large Mammals, Discover Scavengers, and Discover Migratory Herbivore actions. The fifth action you can perform on your turn is to swap animal positions. This action allows you to select any two animals on the map and swap their positions. The sixth action is to move an animal one to three spaces. You are not allowed to move animals diagonally. One thing to keep in mind is by the time you end your turn, only one animal can be occupying one space. You are allowed to move animals through spaces already occupied by other animals, but make sure by the time you end your turn, only one animal is in one space. Keep in mind that these two actions cannot be played in the first round. Action number seven is taking a card from the scene card pool. You can take one out of the six open scene cards from the scene card pool and take additional cards by paying a coin per card. For example, if you want to purchase a total of three cards, pay one coin for the basic action and two coins for the additional two cards, making your total three coins. 
After you finish taking a card or cards from the pool, refill the pool from the scene deck. Newly revealed cards are not available for purchase on this turn. The last action available for play is redrafting the scene card pool and taking one card. By implementing this action, you can discard all six cards currently in the scene card pool and draw six fresh cards from the scene deck. After doing so, you can take one card from the newly drawn pool. You can purchase additional cards in this turn by spending one coin per card. Now, there are two rules regarding Tableau in Wild Serengeti. One, all scene cards in a player's Tableau should be visible to other players with their scene cards face up in front of them. Two, you can only hold a maximum of eight incomplete scene cards in your Tableau. If you have more than eight incomplete cards by the end of your turn, you need to trade the excess cards for coins or discard them. Now, let's move on to action space restrictions. Action spaces that are fully enclosed can only house one player marker. Action spaces that are partially enclosed are open to any number of players at any given time. After you place your player marker on an action space, the marker remains in that space until your next action. And remember, during your next turn, you cannot use the same action space again. You must move to a new action space. So if you want to play a certain action again in your next turn, you must place your player marker in an action space other than where it was previously placed. Just a small tip. Action spaces requiring two coins is quite an investment, so I wouldn't recommend it unless absolutely necessary. Aside from the eight basic actions, there are three free actions that do not incur coins and can be performed as many times as needed in a turn. The first free action is you can discard any two incomplete scene cards to the discard pile at any time to receive one coin. You are also allowed to discard one scene card at any given time, but there are no benefits to doing so. Completed scene cards cannot be discarded. Second, if the scene card's conditions are met, a player can complete as many as they would like. And third, a player can freely spend food and VFX tokens, but we'll touch on these a bit more later. As you take turns playing out basic actions and free actions, it will come to a point when you've run out of coins or do not wish to play another action for the remainder of the round. In that case, you can pass your turn. Once you've passed a turn, you cannot perform any more basic or free action in that round. Players that have not passed will play on in turns, skipping the turns of the player or players who have passed. The round ends when all players have passed their turn. Bear in mind, passing is not permitted when you have three or more coins in your possession. Scene Cards To gain rewards and icons, you can complete a scene card by arranging the animals on the map as it's displayed on your scene card. There are three different types of scene cards depending on animal patterns. First is the terrain scene. In order to complete a terrain scene card, the animals need to be placed on the specific terrain spaces as indicated on the card. There are four types of terrain on the map, water, grasslands, rock, and woodlands. For example, to complete this scene, there must be a crocodile in the woodlands, a crocodile in the water, and a hyena in the water. The order or adjacency in which the animals are placed is irrelevant for this type of scene card. Second is straight line scenes. In order to complete a straight line scene card, the animals need to be in a straight line and in the same order as shown on the scene card. They do not need to be placed right next to each other and the direction does not matter. It also does not matter if there are other animals in between the animals on your scene card. The animals just need to be placed in the same straight line, either horizontally or vertically, but not diagonally. But pay close attention to each animal's terrain condition as well. In this example, the rhino must also be placed in the grasslands. Lastly, the adjacency scene. In order to complete an adjacency scene card, the animals must be located in the eight spaces surrounding the central animal. 
The animal at the top of the card represents the central animal. For example, to complete this scene, the leopard and the lion needs to be placed adjacent to the central animal, the giraffe. Again, take into account each animal's terrain condition. To assist in completing scene cards, there are two types of resources available for use. Food tokens and VFX tokens. Food tokens allow you to move an animal of your choice already on the map, one space. You can move the animal vertically or horizontally, but not diagonally. If you use three food tokens during a turn, you can, for example, move the lion two spaces and the gazelle one space. As for the visual effect tokens, also known as VFX tokens, spending one token allows you to ignore one terrain condition on a scene card to complete it. If a VFX token is used to ignore the terrain condition for the zebra, the zebra can now be placed on any terrain space. However, the vulture and the gazelle will still need to be placed on the rock terrain. The VFX token is only used to ignore the terrain condition of animals, not their presence. So a zebra still needs to be present somewhere on the map. Spending a resource is a free action. So if you have food or VFX tokens, you want to use, you're free to spend as many as you need during your turn. When you complete a scene card and place the completed card in your video gallery, Reward for completing that card is available immediately. Scene card completion is a free action with no limit, so it can be done at any point, how many times you'd like during your turn, but only during your turn. The timing for claiming rewards is an important feature for a few cards, so you must decide carefully on when to complete your scene card. Even with the conditions met, you can choose to withhold completing your card if you do not wish to receive the rewards on the current turn. Now, let's move on to the types of rewards. By completing this card, you would be able to collect one VFX token immediately. By completing this card, you would receive three documentary points. Some scene cards have rewards that increase your documentary score based on the number of icons you have in your video gallery. When you see these icons in the rewards section of your scene cards, it is referring to the accumulated number of these icons you possess in your video gallery. For example, this card rewards documentary points for every animal icon you've collected in your video gallery. So if you collected six animal icons in your video gallery, that's six documentary points. Now let's get into the significance of each icon. If a scene card with icons is completed and placed in your video gallery, you'll receive the benefits of the icon throughout the game. You do not receive any benefits from icons on uncompleted scene cards in your tableau. There are eight different types of icons in Wild Serengeti. Leaf, flower, and fruit icons are plant icons. In order to obtain documentary points with these plant icons, you need to complete a scene card that rewards documentary points for plant icons. For example, you've just completed card number 128. Including this scene card, the number of plant icons you've collected is 16 fruits and 2 leaves. You will need to choose one type to calculate your reward. Your best bet for highest points would be the one you've collected the most of, so fruit it is. That would mean 16 points for your fruit icons, plus 2 for a total of 18 documentary points rewarded. Food and VFX icons, on the other hand, are resource icons. Resource icons on completed scene cards means during each round preparation phase, you are rewarded every corresponding resource. Next is the like icons. You can receive extra documentary points at the end of the game, depending on the number of like icons you collected. For example, if you collected eight like icons throughout the game, you receive an extra 33 documentary points at the end of the game. If you collected 14 like icons, you would receive 50 points for 10 like icons and 10 points for the remaining four like icons for a total of 60 points. Now, rare icons are given to scene cards that are significantly more difficult to complete. There are only six cards in the scene card deck with the rare icon. Due to its rarity and difficulty, rare icons provide a hefty reward. 
For example, you complete card number 108, and including the newly completed scene card, you have a total of three rare icons in your video gallery. In this case, multiply your three rare icons by two, then add 11 to get 17 documentary points. The last of our icon is the animal icon. Animal icons are used to count towards the number of corresponding animals you'll have in reference to the award ceremony card. We'll get into what this means when we get into the award ceremony in just a bit. Round preparation. When a round is complete, it is followed by the round preparation phase to prepare each player for a new round. But it's not needed before the first round. Round preparation proceeds in the following order from steps A to F. Step A asks that the round marker be moved to the next round space. Step B makes sure to check and see if any events need to take place. The round events are as follows. Before round 4 and 6 begin, an award ceremony is held with their corresponding award tiles. Award ceremonies are contests where players are ranked based on the number of the specific award animal they have in their video gallery. The award animal for the award ceremony is randomly chosen by the award tile that was picked and placed during game setup. For example, let's say before round four, there is an award tile placed under the coming round for the lion award ceremony. Each player will need to count up the number of lions in their video gallery, as well as the total number of animal icons that they've collected. One animal icon counts as one award animal and can be used in both rounds of the awards ceremony. If you have a total of three lions and four animal icons in your video gallery, that means you have seven lions collected for the awards ceremony. The player with the highest total of awards animals and animal icons combined gets first place and receives double the total in documentary points. And second place is awarded an equal number of documentary points as their award animal total. Unfortunately, there are no rewards for third place and below. Another event to keep in mind is the Great Migration. The Great Migration occurs before rounds 4, 5, and 6 and is marked with the Gazelle icon. When it's time for the Great Migration, draw a card from the top of the Great Migration deck. The card will show a grid, like so. Showing the Great Migration the animals on the corresponding spaces on the map are intending to take. Any animal on the marked spaces must be removed from the map and placed back into their corresponding discovery area on the action board. In one through three player modes, only the animals on the brown spaces migrate and need to be removed. In four player mode, all animals both in brown and blue spaces migrate and need to be removed from the map. Step C is redrafting the scene card pool after you've finished all events that need to take place. Discard all six cards in a scene card pool and draw six new cards from the deck to create a new scene card pool. On to step D. Each player will need to draw four new scene cards from the deck and choose one to keep and discard the rest. You are more than welcome to keep more than one card, but it will cost one extra coin per card you decide to keep. Once we're done choosing our new scene card, on to step E, receiving your round rewards. The number of coins each player receives is set. From rounds 1 to 3, each player receives 6 coins during round prep, and from rounds 4 to 6, each player receives 7. Food and VFX resources are also collected during this step. You receive food and or VFX resources for each corresponding icon collected. Last step is step F, passing on the first player marker. The player with the first player marker will need to pass the marker on to the next player in turn. That concludes round preparation, and a new round begins with a newly appointed first player marker holder. And the end of round six marks the end of the game. After the game has ended, remember to count the bonus scores you might have earned from like icons or your specialist cards and move your markers on the score tracker accordingly. Once everyone's markers are on their final score, the player with the highest documentary score wins. Before we go, Wild has advanced rules for experienced players and also supports solo and co-op modes. Please refer to page 14 to 16 in our rulebook for more details. 
You are now ready to play Wild Serengeti.